Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a top-down level for a upcoming game for mobile devices. You can see currently I'm compiling for Android. And so far I have created three levels. I have used several assets from the asset store. One of them is Tidy Tile Mapper, Mad Level Manager, Easy Touch. Easy Touch is basically just to uh, make a very good and fast joystick on uh, mobile devices in the scenes. Mad Level Design Manager, sorry, is uh, what you actually see on screen right now. Is where we can get the states of each level linked to them and linked back, and we're going to be able to save our profile and how far you're going to get. So if you unlock two levels, you would like to have them unlocked next time you play the game as well. And that is all handled by Mad Level Manager. That's pretty cool. Last thing we're going to use today is the Tidy Tile Mapper. We're simply going to draw out our level before we're going to drop our prefabs into the map itself. So, let's begin. The first thing we want to do is to create a new scene. So I hit Control N, sorry, Control N, and sure, save. We got get this blank scene. I'm going to delete the main camera. I'm not going to use it. Then I'm going to hit Save Scene into my game levels, and I'm going to save it as something I can recognize. So that's level 4 in area 1. So 1-4, one, and you can see that's what we got now. Now we're going to work with our Tidy Tile Mapper. If you haven't already you import it and you open the window called Tidy Tile Mapper right here, you'll get this window out. Yeah, it's a bug right now where the <laughs> regardless how wide you're going to make it, it's always going to scroll, but hey, it's one of the great tools, so I don't mind. First thing, I'd like to show you how to add a block. You can see I have these blocks and they're basically all prefabs, but we're going to use them as assets in our game. But at the top, there is a block editor. You can also access it from the window right here, block editor. You can see I got an empty block out here. What you can do is basically take any block and modify them, edit them. You can see I they are the standard block that came with the mapper and various different states. This basically means just imagine this as you're looking down on top of the block. You're looking down on top of this. And the white means there is nothing around it. So if you place it, there won't be blocks around it and it will use this block. If you place it and there are blocks in these locations, it will try to use one of these. If there are blocks all around it, it will use one of these. But since we're going to use a top down, these aren't really that good for us because that's basically if you look from the side of the block. So <clears throat> We already have a block right here, but we're going to add a new block anyway. There we go, block number 10. And we're going to call it new block. And the variant we're going to work with, it, it doesn't really matter because we can use all of them. Uh, let's just uh, use this one. So we're going to click this small circle, as you can see right here. And you can select all the blocks you have in uh, imported right now. And uh, I would like some something grassy. So you can see the different types of grass. These are the standard blocks that came with the. So we're going to click that one and we're just going to click add variant. There we go. And then we click save. Uh, basically, we already have, have this block. But in any case, we could add more variants. That just means it's going to randomize between the two. There we go. 
and save. And enable, of course. There we go, and you can see it showed up right over here. To start making a map, we're going to create a new map using this map creation tool right here. And we're going to call it map underscore zero four. The zero is for area one. We're going to click advanced, going to click growth axis forward. That's because we're working on a top down. We're going to click add map and we get this block. Now what you want to do is basically position your camera so you have an idea of what we're going to do. I'm going to select down here the paint tube or brush if you want. And I'm going to select one of the blocks. Well, let's just use the one we just made. Okay. And I'm just going to click once. And you can see we get these tiles. It's going to pre-format each section in a 5x5 five five pattern. So I imagine my level to be this big. Um, it might look a bit strange, but it's basically just square. So if you have did choose the upward position from map creation, you will have, have it this way. And it's basically some coding about how the grass will be placed on the blocks, but we like it this way, especially since we're going to play top down. Notice how we haven't paid any attention to uh, positions, transitions, not global or local, and we're not going to. We're going to work with that later. We're just going to design our map right now. Just adding two more. <clears throat> okay, before we draw the map, you have to understand what the game is. The game is a ball you roll around and you have to push some crates into some zones. When you push them into some zones, they will unlock another zone and you will be able to move to the exit. So it's basically what you would call a casual puzzle game. Okay, so what we need to do is design a start area. And uh, the way we're going to design a start area is by selecting the first block which basically is an empty block, just like those gray out here. Okay, let me turn that mail off. There we go. And um, you erase the blocks you want your character to move in. So, okay. I imagine myself to start right here. And maybe move down this way. And uh, the character has to... Go to the exit right here. and uh, But these blocks will not be uh, available for him. We're going to add something where he has these blocks. He can't pass through these blocks. Um, they will be uh, just like this in the beginning. But we're going to add some triggers to remove them. But in this tutorial, we're just going to paint the map. So we start here, we end here, and we have to go somewhere to remove these blocks. But it's important that we remove the blocks in this mode, because once we are out, it's, it's kind of tedious to edit each single block. So it's important to have an idea of what you're going to do. Okay, so we're going to need to make an area where we are adding a trigger. So something like this. And maybe we're going to let me just count that out. There we go. Add a block right here as well, so he has to move around something. Something fun. It's nice and simple. Okay. I'm going to click the, the flower block and I'm just going to paint a few flowers in just to add a bit of variation. go. I also imagine maybe adding some trees, and maybe obstacles, but we'll look into that later. Basically, the first five to ten levels are just going to be sort of 
tutorial levels where people get to know the map and know the game how it works and now we're done we're ba basically done i'm done with the tidy tile mapper right now so i'm going to click this tool right here disable all tools i'm going to hit Control s to save and see the star is gone and i'm going to just click the map right here in the hierarchy and you can see everything is uh, located all blocks and areas in this thing has a script connected to them that you can see in the inspector and uh, that's a problem we need to remove all those scripts and just turn it everything into blocks and the way you do that is uh, right here there's something called map management just above the tools and i'm going to select stripping level I'm going to select strip all because what we are doing here is basically just drawing out an, an area and we are only going to use that area. We don't care about any other functions of this uh, asset or anything else. You could kind of add also add back backgrounds, maybe some scripts and such, but we're not going to do that. So we're just going to strip it for all so it's just the models. There we go. And we're going to hit publish. You can see it says building map and it's done sometimes it takes a quite a while and other times it's quite fast you can see it's got saved in something called Mapa maps map 04 prefab okay well we're basically done with this so i'm just going to select it and delete it There we go. The map is saved. You can see I also have map tree. I'm going to delete that as well. I'm done with that. It moved the entire map into a folder or block itself containing all the information needed for the map. So I'm just going to drag that right up into the scene and leave it there. So now I have my map. I don't need this tool anymore, so I can oh, remove it, save my map, and uh, I'm ready to model the actual map itself. One more thing before we are finished with the tidy tile map, but there's something called helpful primitive right here. Basically what this is, is just planes to a, help you generate a ground beneath so your models won't fall through we are not going to use it because we have our own prefabs let's just edit that so we get this okay now we have to worry about positioning this map according to the ball prefab the camera how it's set up in the first level well I actually you can see i have my game levels here but down here i have a sorry there we go prototype map and how it's set in the prototype is actually how it affects the rest of the game. So, instead of pulling this into the scene, I'm just going to pull the player start right up into the hierarchy. So we can see, okay, that's the player start. I'm going to click the map and select the entire thing. And I'm just going to position it. Looking down on this camera right here, you can see... We now have a skybox and everything we want. Just going to check to see how it looks. It's fine. And it sticks a bit above. That's fine because once we're adding the wrist, it's going to drop down when you start the game. There we go. So now we have the map, we have the character, we have controls, joystick, camera movement. I need to add a ground so the object won't fall through the floor. I'm going to add this plane because I know it fits and the size is working. You can see it's a bit too big to fit. So I'm just going to center it a bit like 
that and adjust the size because you won't want it to stick out over the edges like that. There we go. Just going to make sure the height is zero. Going to check the height of the map, zero, platform. This one is a bit lower, but the actual height is not measured on the ball. But you can see there's something, something strange here. So we're going to select the plane and move it down just a bit. Because zero is in the middle of these. So plane needs to be there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally turned the recording off. We were editing the plane height. The plane just needs to be below the blocks. So that's point zero. And you can see it's point five, minus point five. It's just really low. That's fine. So let's Let's uh, check if it works. Yeah, the ball is rolling. And I'm getting collider detection. Okay. We're going to add the check for end game. But before we do, let's just check this map and see. Everything is uh, almost at a block this one is almost at one this one is almost at five so let's just select the map and place it at one and this one at <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry about that and uh, a, a few minor adjustments on the balls should be fine. So let's just make sure it's inside still. Yeah, it is. And it's higher, closer to zero than the plane. Yes, it is. Okay, everything is fine. Now we're going to add our end cube. That's the box that's actually going to test when the game ends and save the level. Well, it's actually not going to save the level. It's going to save the progress of the player. So, there we go. And when you roll the ball into that, it's going to end the game. Now the script is set up, so I have to make sure it's disabled, like so, and thereby invisible. Now we're going to add the obstacle for this area, and that's uh, that is blocks. So let's just pull that block right in there and try to align it. And see, zero, one, 